Hello all, this is John from EastCoastArmory.com and I'm here today with a project update video for this 1-6 scale radio controlled Armor Tech late production Tiger 1. Since the last video update progress has been made to the tank's bow area, we'll be going over these modifications and details in this video. At first glance, the easiest addition that can be recognized that was added was that of the Zemurite. The front, the front hull Zemurite has now been completed and is fully sculpted on with the same procedure that was done on the back. On the Tiger 1, the Zemurite is found on the front plate, the bottom quarter plate, as well as most vehicles also had Zemurite on the front plate as well. I have seen some variations in which this plate has been left blank. However, on this build, I went ahead and added the Zemurite to the front portion as from all of my research fo uh, fo photographs have shown, most vehicles had it on this location here. One portion of the tank that did not get the Zemurite was that of the bow machine gun and the front vision block. I have seen variations of boat styles in which the tank had Zemurite on here as well as tanks that did not have Zemurite on here. As for which one to go with, that's all up to personal choice and taste, as well as if you're modeling a certain vehicle. On the Zemurite itself, we can see here that on the portion of the bullet guard, the Zemurite is that of a smaller weave, and is sculpted on a little bit differently than that of the rest of the hull. In addition to having the sculpted on weave slightly altered, also around the bow machine gun, we could see some kind of a star pattern with the Zemurit. These are common features found on the majority of Zemurited Tiger 1s that I've seen in photographs. The front visor for the driver. The kit supplies you with a functional visor block. The blocks themselves are really nicely done and they're the right shape. They assemble very easily and one unique feature about the Armor Tech is that the visor, once assembled, is actually functional. It can go up and down. Pieces are all made out of CNC and aluminum and are you can install them literally right out of the box. As for the visor bullet guard, the bullet guard is supplied with a kit and is nicely done that it's all CNC'd out of aluminum, pre-tapped and drilled, and has its fastener locations present in the in the unit. The only thing missing on the unit here to improve the look of it are the little slot which would have been found on the slot screws which are used to fix this part to the real tank. Rather than going ahead and trying to add the slots, I'm just going to go ahead and switch it out for the resin unit from East Coast Armory. By simply swap, swapping out the metal unit for the resin one, it saves a little bit of time and then I don't have to go ahead and try to fabricate those slots into the unit here. And here's the vision block completely assembled and mounted to the vehicle. As, as of note, we have two small fastener holes on, that are currently on the outside of the armor here. These holes here are going to be plugged up after filming of this scene. Once they are plugged, they're going to be sanded flush and will blend in with the rest of the cast texturing on the component. As for the vision block itself, like I mentioned earlier, it is fully functional and it does go up and down. One simple addition that I made to the vision block is if I open it up, we can see here I added on a clear piece of plastic on the inside of the vehicle. This clear piece of plastic replicates the panzer glass which would have been found on the armored vision block. Tiger 1, even though it had a direct vision port, did have an armored clear prism that helped the driver see out of the vehicle. The addition of the clear piece of plastic was a simple yet effective addition and once added to the vehicle really helps in the model's accuracy. And here's the inside portion of the driver's periscope. As we can see the piece of Lexan that simulates the Panzer glass is mounted toward or is mounted on the inside of the vehicle and to mount it was very it was a very simple installation. I went ahead and cut a strip of Lexan plastic that is the same measurements as the mounting holes for the external components that get mounted on the inside. Simply just drilled out where the fasteners go and sandwiched at the 
Lexan in with the fasteners that hold together the external components. Moving our way to the Bow MG34, here goes the machine gun mount prior to installation. This started off as the kit supplied mount. The kit supplied mount is one piece CNC aluminum and it's pre drilled out, pre tapped, and has its recess in for its ball machine gun. The kit supplied unit can be installed out of the box and is a very decent looking piece. One modification that I wanted to make to it, however, is the modification of the opening for the machine gun. On the kit supplied mount, the recesses here are a lot more straighter than you see it on the modified version. To open up the recesses a bit, I went ahead and went in there with a Dremel with a router bit and shaved away the unneeded material. The Because of the material that the ball mount is made of, the process was done with a Dremel and was done fairly quickly. After the piece was all drilled out and filed down to a nice smooth finish, I went ahead and applied cast texturing to the front portion here of the mount. The bow machine gun on the Tiger One was made out of cast metal and then at the foundry it was machined down to have this little taper here as well as this inset. Both of these versions were turned on the lathe that you see here. And here goes the bow machine gun affixed to the vehicle. Not only is the bow machine gun mounted, but the bow machine gun was also modified to pivot via remote. The ball rotates side by side and is picking backing off of another channel which would be used for another function as the build progresses. If we notice, currently there's no bow MG34T fit affixed to the vehicle. The kit originally does come out, come with a basic MG34T barrel, however I wasn't able to find it amongst all the rest of the kit components that I have. It's no big deal, if anything I was going to replace the kit one anyway with a resin one from PansWork.com. More information on that is to follow. And here goes the functional machine gun ball from the inside portion or view of the tank. Here we just have a standard Futaba servo. A linkage that's utilizing brass and nylon ball joints. And then the modified kit machine gun ball itself. As you can see here, there is a small little brass bracket that is affixed to the fastener screws which secure the whole ball to the base. Purpose of the bracket is to prevent the ball from rotating on you as opposed to pivoting. One common problem to overcome when making pivotable machine guns is the tendency to have the ball rotate on you like a wheel as opposed to just going left and right. To alleviate this, the design I came up with was to utilize a piece of square stock. The square metal stock enters inside the machine gun ball. The square stock is where the ball gets mounted to for, which connects it to the servo. Purpose of the square stock is that it slides on this track over here which is fabricated out of the brass strip. The brass strip has a slot that's very closely cut into it that's the same size of the square stock. The, by doing this, this focuses the force of the servo to move to go ahead and pivot the unit left and right as opposed to having it rotate on you which, could, which is normally the path of least resistance. The bracket acts as a track and it eliminates that from happening. One thing as of note, because this is a late production Tiger One, it is missing some details which are found on the earlier production units. This would be on the front visor the two small backup periscope holes which would, on, which would have been found on top of the vision block and the tarpaulin slash snorkeling straps which are found on either side of the machine gun ball. Starting with the vision blocks, towards probably about 1943 or so, the vision holes were deleted and you'll see on several early as well as mid-production units, the holes have a welded plug in their spots. On the later production units, the piece was omitted completely and since this 
tank here is covered with zemerite, no evidence of the holes are going to be present. Same thing, or similar feature with that of the of the straps. If we go in my video listings, you'll see my earlier initial production tank, and you'll see two little wing nut straps which would have been affixed here. Purposes of these straps is to affix on the large waterproof cap for use of snorkeling, or it would also be used for a tarpaulin which would, pro which would protect the MG34T uh, from damage from the elements. To save on production time, these two little straps were dropped and, like you see here, are not present on the front hull. One component that I haven't quite added yet is that of the center mounted headlight. I have the components on hand. I fabricated my own headlight bracket. The bracket itself is made out of sheet steel and it's all soldered together. As for the headlight, the kit supplies it with a very nice aftermarket investment cast brass functional headlight. As you can see, it's pre wired, it's pre assembled, and just like the real unit, can disassemble showing the lens detail underneath. Piece is highly recommended and is offered on the aftermarket scene. However, for the last several years now, these Bosch lights have been standard on the Armor Tech tanks. As for the headlight, like I mentioned before, another portion that makes this a late production tank is that the headlight location was moved to the center location here in between the machine gun and the visor. Prior to this, the headlights would have been mounted on the top deck on the two corners. Towards the latter half of the war, it was decided to save on material and mount the headlight to a center, lo center location like we have here. Currently, the reason why this piece isn't installed yet is I'm waiting for the correct type of fasteners to affix the headlight to the base plate. And I'm also trying to work out a way to have the deck removable, but keep the the electrical conduit detailing intact. More information on this is to follow as the build progresses. Moving our way towards the model's front fenders, just like with the model's rear fenders that I discussed in a previous video, for the two front fenders I went ahead and opted for replacement of the kit supplied fenders with that of an aftermarket set from six scale icons. Just like with the rear fenders, the six scale icons front fenders also come in an unassembled state. They are all made out of photo etched brass and come with all of the metal fasteners required for assembly. Also included is a set of assembly instructions and along with a set of some basic hand tools as well as some basic metal working skills I was able to assemble the fenders. Here goes the brass six scale icons front fender compared with that of the Armor Tech kit supplied sheet steel fender. Sheet steel fender that comes with the Armor Tech kit comes pre bent and also is very easy to assemble with the kit supplied parts. This would include the small little hinges for mounting it onto the deck, as well as the two little brass hinges for the side flip up panel. The Armor Tech piece is pretty decent, and this fender here, along with the other fender for the opposite side, will more than likely be placed in my storage spare parts box and will more than likely be used on a future Tiger 1 build. The fenders do not have their interior detailing or their under panel detailing. This detailing however is present on the 6 scale icons piece. For the piece I went ahead and soldered everything together. The purpose of that is that it gives a very strong bond and which will is very important specifically since this tank is radio controlled and dirt and debris can hit this component. So having the pieces all secured on with solder is a nice touch. One thing if we notice, the uh, fenders, the top hinging part has not been crimped yet. For the kit, they actually want you to recycle the small little hinges that are supplied with the Armor Tech kit. The small little rivets that the previous builder mounted on are going to be snipped and going to be affixed to the tank to which then I'll I'll be able to fit the fender and finish off the bending required for the hinge mechanism. Just like with the rear fenders, the front fenders operate just like the real one. The locking mechanism 
is functional and it retains the panel in the open state. For transport use, you would loosen the small little supplied wing nut, move the lock back, and then the piece would flip upward. You could then lock the piece in the upward state by sh shifting the lock down and retightening the hex or the, uh, the wing nut. Once that's done, the fender panel will not flop downward. For mounting on the brackets to the tank's hull, the kit wants you to go ahead and utilize a small cap screw and a nut that would go on the bottom portion of the plate here. For this build I slightly modified the mounting system a little bit in that instead of using the cap screw I went ahead and soldered a small nut to each of the brackets and with a slot screw I went ahead and put that through the bottom. As you can see the there's a small little protrusion of threads that emerge from the bracket itself. These threads are simply just ground off with the Dremel. Once ground off, the brackets are on nice and securely and ready for the fender to be mounted. As for the plate itself, the plate has four little recesses in the locations where the hinges get mounted. The recesses are milled directly into the plate and are nicely done. However, I didn't see the recesses being that necessary for the build, so the recesses were plugged over and sanded flush via bodywork. Once they were sanded flush, their holes were re-drilled into them, and it was at that point where it gave me a nice smooth surface to mount on the, f the brackets that you see here. And here go the hinges with the threaded protruding portions removed flush. With them out of the way, I could then now simply hinge on the front mud flap and this procedure is now complete. Also if we could notice the portion here that mounts to the fender and the small little lip here which the fender mounts on is void of any Zemurai coating. This is because this portion here needs to be nice and flush for that of the fender. Here goes the model with the two front mud flaps mounted. As you can see there the hinges have, have their pins replaced and the pieces are now permanently installed. Just like on the real tank, the hinges hinge up, the fenders can hinge upward and the transport sliver can also be flipped in the upward position and locked there if desired. One little detail that was added to the front fender work which is not found on the six scale icon set but is found on the eastcoastarmory.com catalog is that of the Tiger One front fender retention hook. On the Tiger One, to keep the fender from flopping up and down when the tank is in operation, the Germans devised a small little retractable hook that is similar in concept to the ones that you would see on the Jeep hinge or on the, the hood of a Jeep. A small little hook that once in place prevents the fender from flopping up and down, but whenever you want to get access to the fender or to the track, Simply unhinge the piece and you could now get access to the, the area without the fender in the way. And that concludes this project update video for this 1-6 scale Armor Tech radio controlled late production Tiger 1. If you like this video, stop by and like us on Facebook. And don't forget to check out eastcoastarmory.com for more 1-6 scale tank builds as well as other 1-6 scale detail components. Thank you.